Thanks for tuning in to the Streets of Rage Quit, you sore losers. Lee Casey, Jesse Bloomhagen. We boiled a couple of bullies in the last episode. Yeah, after fuck those guys. Yeah, fuck those guys. After we were discussing getting our asses kicked and doing some ass kicking. I think I would like to continue that topic of uh, scrapping around. Did yeah. you have anything else that you wanted to add? Yeah, so yeah, I, I told Casey the name. He is he, he thinks he remembers the kid. But I, For the first time in like 20 years, I, I, haven't, I haven't had an inclination as to who this guy was for fucking two decades but I, it does <laughs> ring a bell it does ring a bell i think i know who you're talking about i don't I, but i don't remember his last name so that doesn't help either yeah. um anyway so what i also remembered was he was a grade lower than me so i felt kind of bad <laughs> <laughs> so i think i was in grade five you're years. the bully <laughs> well kind I mean, of i think he was ragging on me for like a couple days and I, I honestly don't remember what he was saying but i was just like i had enough of it i was like you know what it's time for you to go away. To be fair, you had to do something about it because if a if a kid in a lower grade was fucking ripping on you, like that's not a good that, that wasn't good for your rep back in the day, you know what I mean? Well, the thing is like he was smaller than me too. Yeah. And I was a small dude. So So the guy had balls, I guess. Yeah, he had chops, man, so good for him. Yeah, that's awesome. But I remember like and the, the crazy thing too is like an elementary fight doesn't really, really mean much because I I remember like literally like a week later we were like kind of homies we were, yeah exactly that's, that's <laughs> like, what happened really like, didn't make mean much you fight on the playground and that's it and you know what here's another reason why i wanted to continue this uh this story there was one occasion where you and i had a spat on the playground and between, I, between each other yeah between you and me and i remember this I like there must be more I, I no no it was just one oh, and okay. i remember this because of because it was it was hilarious you know we made a, such a big deal that we fought oh, I, remember, I remember this bat we fought for like the first time in like I, I, ever it was like from I think K to grade four. I think we started we fought in grade four, or grade three. Either way, we were friends for a few years before any of this ever can happened. I guess what it is. You can guess what. Happened. Yeah, you can guess because I think we talked about it already. We fought Did over. We? we fought over the who got the money for the comics, right? No, that's not it. Okay. I don't. I don't even consider that a fight. Okay, then continue. We on. were fighting because like from kindergarten, we actually discussed this in the pilot episode. From kindergarten to grade six, like we would always play like Sonic on the playground. And I think for I think one time you wanted to be a different character because like you would, oh, yeah. you would always play as Doctor <laughs> Robotnik and I would always play as Sonic on the playground. That's just what it was. And I think one time you wanted to be like Knuckles or you wanted to play Sonic and I'm like no I want to play I want to play as Sonic like I'm always Sonic and you're like yeah but that's why I want to play Sonic and like we got into a fight and then we're like fine I'm not playing with you on the playground anymore and then like <laughs> and then by the end of the day like by the time it was like the after school bell we're like I'm sorry and we're like yeah like we'll play tomorrow and then like we just resumed as if nothing happened yeah that's how, it is. <laughs> and that's how playground fights are in elementary man and I'm pretty sure like I invited that kid to my birthday party like that same summer and he came <laughs> like, like, like that's how that's how meaningless it was yeah man yeah we were just so innocent back then. Like, we didn't hold grudges or anything, you know? Yeah, yeah it was a good time. I mean, like... Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, you didn't hold grudges. We're playing with each other right now on Dude, fucking Streets of Rage Quit. I mean, you know me. I'm, like, probably the most chill fucking person there is. Yeah, man. Like, it's just, like, nothing usually phases me. And, like, I remember something that a teacher said. I can't remember who it was. I think it was a grade two teacher, if you remember who it is. Um, the reason why I'm so chill is because she's like, listen, if you're not dying and someone close to you is not dying, what the fuck is the problem like you know like what what's there what's there, what's there really to be angry of? that's true and, you yeah. know i'm like you know what that's true that's such chill advice for elementary and right? i'm like i'm seven years old I'm like no one's dying i'm not dying <laughs> <laughs> what's there like what's to be mad at like you know what i mean what a wild fucking way to learn you know and ever since then i'm like i mean don't get me wrong there's gonna be a point in time where i'm dying but i'll, I'll cross <laughs> that bridge when i get there <laughs> uh, won't we all yeah yeah hopefully not for many many years that's fair man that's fair and speaking of, oh my god, okay, I'm gonna go down a little bit of a rabbit hole here. Let's do it. I, I've, I've, I have a huge fear of dying. You know, really, I mean? like, like that's my, that's my only fear in life is, is dying because, like, I don't want to, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want the lights to be out. You know what I mean? Fair. I'm scared of, of no afterlife. Wow. But like, interesting. Over, over the past couple of years, and I don't like getting religious, I've kind of come to terms into like what I feel like the afterlife might look like, and I feel like it's, I feel like, I feel like there's something there. And I can't quite explain what it is. Sure. But like, you have to think of all those generations of human beings and what they've left behind for us to discover. All of them have indicated that there's some sort of spiritual life or ghost life. Absolutely. I, yeah. So I, I, I believe that something like that will happen to me when I die. And that's kind of give me a little bit of peace and a little bit of uh, comfort. Yeah. Because the longest time, dude, I don't fucking die, dude. Well, I don't think anybody it's wants to die. It's scary to think but... about the fact that you just lights out. Like there's no, there's no existence, man. Like that's that that is fair. And you know what? Memory's gone. Yeah, and I'll give you props too. You know, like discussing you know religious or you know religious beliefs or whatever it might be on the channel is it's a hard thing to do. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. Like I I, I I'm not saying I don't believe Shit. in other religions and stuff, and they have a place in 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 life, and that's great. Like everyone, that's the thing is like 
there's a path somewhere. Right. I don't have the answer to it. I don't. I don't know if anyone has the answer to Nobody it. Nobody has the answer until we until we know. We'll know once we know. And but I believe there's something there. And like I said, it's just there. Oh, I made that. There's so many things that point to something being there because of the way that previous generations have left for us to find. Yep. Like that kind of stuff's been since like Egyptians and like uh, even before like like BC, like whatever that's called. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Well, no, I. Oh wow! I just flew right into dude, that. That, that was fucking clean, clean, dude. clean, bro. Bones. Fuck yeah! I am on. I'm on the same page with you, man. I, a lot of people are adversarial when it comes to science and religion, but you know, I'm not a religious person. You know, I, I let the fact speak for itself. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I love science. I love space, but I, I'm also mystified by a lot of the the cool things that are out there that, that, that are inexplainable. So for me, it's like religion and science can go hand in hand if that's your belief system. I think for me. It's, uh, you know, coming to ter terms of my own mortality is, is a big, you know, it's, it's a, it's a big question of like, how am I going to feel when the time comes? And you're never really going to know until that time actually does happen. And, you know, that's something that I won't be able to explain until we hit that day. But what I can say is that I truly feel like there is something out there because, you know, whether, whether we're in a friggin' matrix system or whether, you know, somebody of a higher power created us or, you know, we're just here for the sake of it, you know, out of all of the, out of all of the friggin' um, the, the ratio of like people who weren't able to experience life to people who actually were conceived, the fact that we're here in itself is a miracle, in my personal opinion. It's like the fact that we won the lottery of birth far exceeds the fact that we don't exist. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there has to be a reason why. We don't know what the reason is, even, but we'll get there when we get there. And even deeper, think of it this way: is like to have this amount of cognitive ability to, to have this kind of thoughts and and to be able to like carry on our life right you know what i mean like that's insane absolutely no other uh organic being that we know of i don't get me wrong i believe in aliens but no other organic life that we know of can do that it's true absolutely to the level that we do like, well, there's some animals that are super fucking smart but like no think, I, think about what the what the human race is actually able to do yeah well yeah, i agree with you because like it's like you know there's a not not to say that you know we're above the ecosystem or anything but there is a huge generational gap between like the smartest mammal and then us right mm -hmm. it's like it's it's insane that like what we can do compared to animals in and of itself so that kind of tells me or leads me to believe that there is like some divine intervention somewhere you know and it's interesting because like i watch oh god damn it i watch all the the, the crazy tinfoil hat stuff um, like ancient aliens and stuff like that. And I remember one theory that they had was, it was super cool to think of, but it's like, what if there's like a missing like, you know, um, genome or something, a part of our DNA where it was tampered with in the ancient times. And, you know, it was like the aliens kind of giving us a boost of like, this is what you need to do to um, like, I guess like supersede the expectation of what civilization is for you guys. You just need help getting there. So we're jumpstarting it for you, right? It's like one of those things where, you know, we had the help of a higher power to grant us those abilities that not even animals have. And I always thought that was like super fucking crazy to think about. Um, and we'll never truly know the answer to what is out there, at least, you know, not in our lifetime, but. No, unfortunately. Yeah, but I do believe in energy and I believe that, you know, everything that's living, you know, even even flies for God's sakes, uh, bugs, insects, animals. I do believe that we all have energy and that energy can't be, you know, um, you know, created or destroyed or, you know, whatever the hypothesis behind that either way it can't be destroyed so that energy has to exist as entropy somewhere like it has to it has to go somewhere there has to be an external after it leaves us you know because to think that we're alive and we exist and then all of a sudden we don't there is no existence i feel like that's not possible because we're already alive mm -hmm. right it's not like okay we didn't exist thousands of years ago and then you know we were conceived of and now we exist it's like the energy was created so now that it's created we cannot be destroyed it'll just be transferred to something else so if that's like another plane of existence that'd be kind of cool yeah and that's kind of like where i was going with it like they, we have to go somewhere exactly and like yeah i envy people like that can accept death at some point in time because it's like man how can you like i mean i would miss all my friends and family you know being able to interact with them and, <clears throat> and see your memories yep and like to be able to like carry on in some sort of like world beyond that, whatever that looks like, I I'm I'm optimistic. I mean, I like to think I would be. <laughs> well, it <laughs> makes me sleep at night a little better. That's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely, man. It's one of those things where, 
you know, <clears throat> we don't know the answer, but you'd be surprised what that answer would be. I like to think of the body as like a cocoon. So, you know, when we're a baby, we're the caterpillar. And then when we're in our adulthood and we're accepting life, we're in the cocoon. And then by the time we reach death, we're the butterfly, you know, like we break out of the cocoon. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, because the caterpillar doesn't realize it's going to become a butterfly. It just goes by a natural instinct, right? It just does what it needs to do. And then it just exists as a butterfly after. So I personally think that even though that's a weird way to describe transformation, it, like it, it, it's possible, like it's possible to change into something else that, that you don't even realize is a thing. Yeah. You know, and like stepping back a little bit, when we talk about things that are unexplainable. I mean, like, I've had my experiences, maybe we'll talk about them in another episode, but... Yeah. There's just so many of those things that, like, you, you, the more people you talk to that are open to that, the more you hear about their experiences, and you're just like, well, I'm not the only one, I'm not crazy, you know what yep. I mean? Like, I agree. I know, what, I know what I saw, and I know what I can't explain. Yep, and I know um, a few people like that, too. I actually dated a girl who died, and, um, and no, I'm not a necrophiliac. <laughs> but she she had a, like, you know, I'm going to respect the privacy and stuff, but she had a near-death experience, and she she talked to me about it and she was very uncomfortable talking about it because she didn't want people to think she was crazy but i believed her and i'm like you know everything that you say checks out on the things that i've read before about near-death experiences you know being able to recall all the events that are happening on the ground as things are happening and you know seeing people in certain areas and then waking up and then being like you said this and you did that and you called this person over and you revived me and i saw everything you know and i felt everything i experienced everything and it's just mm -hmm. it's something you can't put into words and I've read a, I've read a couple of stories of people who you know those people that are like medically dead but then come back. Yep. I've heard or read I should say I've yeah I've read some stories where like yeah. they've they've had similar situations where they've left their body or they'll have like their entire life flash before their eyes mm -hmm. or something like that. But they're like they're like it doesn't go black. <laughs> yeah, it just it never fades. Like it's I think for a split second. People... Sorry, some people have said it goes black, but like there's a, a few people that have said like no man like that's not how like that's not how not how my experience was. <clears throat> Yeah, it's, it's the transfer of energy. So it's like, you know, you might not, like, you might experience nothingness for a second, but it's like, you know, after the black, there's something else. You know what I mean? Like, there's not, like, there's a fade, but it's like, it doesn't stay, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I guess diving from one serious topic to another, you know, I'm going through a situation right now where, like, my father, I don't even think I even told you about this yet. So you've, you feel like quite a bit. I filled you in a little bit, but like, there's more updates with my father. Okay. So he has to come to terms with his own mortality soon because he has, uh, according to the doctors, he has less than five months. So he might not even make it, you know, to the end of this year, which is unfortunate because as of recording, we're in October. He told me this at the end of August. So that's already two months. Mm -hmm. His birthday's on Christmas Day. So like if he doesn't make it, you know, to the holidays and stuff, that would really suck and that would be really unfortunate. But we had to have that conversation over the phone where it's like, hey, son, like, you know, I have no money. Corona is happening. We can't fly you out for, you to, for the funeral. You know, and we had to have that conversation. It's just like, you know, discussing what I have with his girlfriend um, who's been with him for about as long as I've been alive. She's such a sweetheart. She's like a second mom to me. I had a conversation with her too. And it's like, you know, your dad is, uh, you know, accepting his mortality. And, you know, there's there's things where, you know, we, we both wish there are things that we could have done in that life together. And, you know, trying to come to terms with what you haven't done in your life is... Is, a, is something that I can't even describe because I'm living my life right now. But when you come to the end of your life, it'll be interesting to think about what things that I wish I did differently or the things that I wish I was able to do. And he's having that regret not being able to be with his son a lot. So I had to remind him, I said, man, you've been the best uh, influence to me in mm -hmm. my life. You're the, you're, you're honestly like the strongest man that I know. Like no joke, this guy, he has done so much for me. He's hes remained positive right to the bitter end and he's going to, he's like, even though I'm dying, I'm still gonna fight and then I'm still gonna try to live my life. And I respect the hell out of that. And uh, yeah, we just had a conversation a couple days ago, like he's in hospice care and you know, they, they set up the hospital bed for him at home so he can, you know, pass away peacefully. And mm -hmm. um, I know he won't get mad at me for talking about this because it's a real thing and it, you know, it, it's it needs to be discussed and, and you know when the time comes people aren't going to be thrown off guard like hey you know are you okay because it's like it's one of those things where like i'm going to talk about my father who passed away right mm -hmm. and it's going to happen but it's important to like keep people in the loop you know especially with the people who you know you love and care about and just remember that that time comes for everybody and you just don't know when i i lived a point in my life where i thought my mother was going to pass away and uh, she's still fighting, man. Yeah, she's still fighting. Oh, fuck. I fucked that up. 
a serious combo. <laughs> That's okay, dude. Um, yeah, this, so this is good. Yeah, man. It's just one of those things where, you know, when I came back to Edmonton in 2015, my mom was uh, on her deathbed. She was in a coma and we didn't think she was going to wake up. And the doctor said, you know what? She's out of it. Like, she has, a, she has blood pressure lower than an infant right now. She's not going to make it past the night. So she's a religious woman. We, mm-hmm. we gave her her last rites through the, the priest. And then, you know, in the morning after we were divvying up her stuff and like what we were going to do with everything, she woke up. You know, it just wasn't her time. It wasn't her time. That's right. But, yeah. you know, the stuff that she told me that she saw when she was, I guess, under and, you know, dying, you know, I, even though she's a religious woman and she kind of has her own beliefs and, you know, we, we rag on her all the time. You know, there is some stuff that holds credence in my personal opinion, even though I'm not religious. And I won't ever deny her of her experience that she had when she was under. Right. Which, which, which is fair, man. Like, that's not, that's like not how, your experience, right? Exactly. Like, how could I? That'd be ignorant of me. Yeah. So the fact that we're living in a time where my father may very well pass before my mother is oh fuck it's it's ah shitty (laughs) and it's also shitty that my parents are gonna die (laughs) yeah um but yeah it's just one of those things man you just never know when you're gonna go so you have to make the most of it yeah you know it's 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 such a crazy thing to think about and i try to keep that mentality as much as possible i mean like our age that's not something we should be thinking about really at at this point in time but i mean like it, it is in the back of your mind. Right? Yeah. Like, people are going to die, man. We're not young, but we're also not old. Yeah. People yeah, have I mean, died in their 30s, you know? Fuck, I could be gone tomorrow. Yeah. And then I hope you guys enjoy this. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully I can put this up before I die. <laughs> I'm not planning on dying anytime soon. The odds are in your favor. That's true. <laughs> I do. I do feel like an old bastard sometimes. I feel like an old bastard when I can't fucking do this. And I've played this for like 20 years of my life. Um it's just one of those things man you know whenever we go is whenever we go but we got to make the most of it even though the world fucking sucks right now objectively you know like you try your best to do your best you know i don't think like people wake up you know every oh fuck, i'm dead see i just died that was my life i don't think people wake up every day and they just say well how how am i gonna fucking have a shitty day like nobody says that you know so you just gotta make the most of things yeah and because i just died there and we weren't expecting death i think that's it Okay, I think that's the episode. We'll that. But remember, you always have a brother right here. And we'll you take, too, man. We'll take you fucking care of you, no matter what happens, Kev. Appreciate fucking it, man. Love you and I love you too, man. That was serious shit. This is a deep was... episode, so let's let's end it there. <laughs> that was really good, and I got your back too. Always. That's we've been sitting here for fucking twenty seven years. Where, yeah, where never, else would we go? You know, it'll never change. It'll never fucking change. Yeah. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. Shit, that was yeah. wild. That was a religious experience in and of itself. <laughs> You got anything to add? I guess the outro. Yeah, I got nothing to add, man. Just <laughs> <laughs> we're checked out. It's time to go get Subway. Like and subscribe, man. I mean, everyone out there, if you have any experiences, let me know. Um, I'm always I'm always curious to, to hear everyone's story. And, you know, don't be afraid to share. And if you do, um, we'll find a way. Yeah, share so, your experiences with us, guys. We'd love to hear it. Just take care of yourself, and we'll see you on the flip side of the Street to the Rage Quit. We will. Peace out, guys. <laughs>